Hey everybody, welcome back inside the mind of Matt. Um, this is going to be another kind of a tutorial, kind of a walkthrough kind of thing. So if uh, you're not interested in the whole 3D setting up and tweaking and stuff like that, this isn't going to be the video for you. So, But if you are, then continue to watch. And we're going to be talking about changing a nozzle on um, my ANET 88. So stay tuned. So before we get into to the changing of the nozzle, I want to explain why I am. So I've got this, and you know I did some some tweaking of my uh, Z rods or my uh, lead screws on my Z, and uh, I was able to get. A quality that I have not been able to get prior to this so with that being said I threw in a different color and I threw in the blue which this blue I don't know it's been kicking my butt you know I don't know if it was just the machine wasn't set up right but um, I had the, the most of this and I had actually signed up for uh, 3d hubs Dot com and um, they rejected me my Marlin um, I placed it in in the blue PLA that you see here and uh, they rejected it but um, after I tweaked uh, and, and got this quality and I put the blue in the first thing I did is print a Marlin and just so that you know I was passed as a 3d hub but um, when my girlfriend saw this, she's like, oh, I want one of those. So I said, what color? And she said, black. So I printed it in black. But something happened. And if we can get it, as we come right around, boom, right there. And this upper layer, just, it, this was the second failure on this particular um, roll of PLA it's a brand new roll of black PLA um, and I just think that my my nozzle is clogged and there's only one real way to, to find out and that's to open up my extruder and look at my nozzle so that being said I've got a couple extra nozzles and we're going to uh, break open this extruder so Give me a minute, get my tools, and uh, all right, so I'll go at it. Oops. So the tools you're gonna, I'm gonna need is gonna be my uh, 2.5 millimeter Allen. Gonna need an eight millimeter wrench. I've got a big pair of monkey wrench and my nozzle. I just set here somewhere okay now the key about this is and I'm going to warn you that because the plastic has been pushed down into this okay you don't want to do it cold you can break or snap so that's where this is coming in it's going to be to kind of hold the, the hot uh, hot end the hot hot end that's why they call it a hot end because it's hot but uh it's kind of high to hold it and that's how you really want to install your nozzle is with it hot so i got to hit the warm-up button and uh we're gonna all right so we're at about 200 degrees um so i'm gonna be able to take this out Okay, now I'm also going to want to uh, move my fan shroud out of the way. And it's as simple as that. Now I recently had to uh, replace my fan my uh, 
extruder fan that is not not my part cooling fan but this fan here when I did I put this little two-part connector so I can plug it in plug it out but I did some done some research I've done some reading I did some uh, testing of my own and it really doesn't get too hot up in there at this point um, So it's controversial whether or not it's necessary or not, but uh, at this point, you know, the whole thing is holding up my my sensor that I don't even have hooked up yet. But one of those things, you know, potato, potato. Some people run them, some people don't. But anywho, all right. So at this point. Um, there is a set screw up under here. I'm going to loosen that up. And there's a set screw here that holds this all. Now, normally I would just take the, the whole, you know, stepper motor off with it and everything, but this new cable chain has uh, changed that whole thing so I did forget to mention that I believe that this nut under here yeah it's a 10 millimeter okay and there's my extruder all right so now oh look at that everything just came out my thermistor and everything hmm that's interesting. I'm gonna turn that off now. That changes everything because now I have to reset that. But it'll give me an opportunity to clean this up. I'm examine my throat too, which I just happen to have replacements of those. It seems how this got turned off. Kind of got to work fast here. Still pretty warm. Let's set that aside. And you can see right there that this nozzle is pretty caked up. It's still warm too, but it's pretty caked up. So, that being said, I got a replacement. But the other thing is I want to check is my tube. And that looks clogged as well. So, seeing as how I've got to do all of this. Might as well throw a new throat in here as well. So, you're going to get to see how to set this up the way I set it up. Okay. This is still pretty warm, so... I'm going to put it back in this. Alright, so... Take my nut off. Got my new throat. Now I have made this mistake and I want to make sure that you don't. Okay? Now you see the one's got exposed tubing and the other's got a flange built bent right over. Okay? That's the side you want to go up. If you put it the other way, what's going to happen is when you get cold or when you try to pull out a beetle build up down here and as you pull it out this whole tubing will just come out and it just causes all kinds of havoc. I made the mistake I had to go back in and change it. So I'm going to thread this back in. Yep I'm doing it the right way. Okay now we got our block. Make sure we want it pointing the right way. 
just thread it in to start. Now here's the key, okay? You want to thread your nozzle all the way in, okay? All the way in, not just hand tight, okay? Your wrench, as tight as it is, you want to move three flats loose. So there's one, and there's two, and there's three flats. Now I want to tighten my throat right up to that. like it's nice and snug up to that now I'm just gonna give this a little snug and now my nozzles and my throat are nice and tight against each other there's a little gap in between the nozzle and the aluminum hot end and then this distance right here it's going to be just a little bit sticking out because this is going to be right above that hole, that little bearing. It's going to sit just like right about that. So you don't want to stick in too far up where it's hitting that, but just far enough where um, when I stick my filament through the hole, push a little button, and then release it, it just goes right into that hole pretty much the way I've got it set up. And I've also, uh, you know, you want to make sure the orientation of your, you know, wires and everything. Mine just happened to come out. Um, so that's kind of the way um, when you got it all wired up and everything, you kind of got to be careful not to bend the wires or anything like that. But just looks like my thermistor got loose. So I'll just have to find an Allen wrench real quick, small enough for that. And the key is not to over tighten this, because if you kink this little cartridge, then you're going to have a short. Next thing you know, your your extruder head's not going to work. But if you thought ahead like I do, I have a 10 pack right here. So if something happens, um, I can replace it. All right, so I'm going to just concentrate on putting this all back together and uh, go from there. All right, so turns out it is a, well, I got a 1 16th and it just happens to fit. So, all right, I'm going to get my proper orientation here. Now doing your own repairs like this gives you a great sense of what exactly is going on with this thing. And you'll start to notice when things go awry and then you'll know exactly how to fix them. So you don't tighten it too much because it doesn't spring back. Put my bottom screw in. Lock this big nut into the top. To keep my hot end from moving. Okay, and then I'm just gonna recheck my heat break here. Get that out of the way now. Oh, look at that. And 
turn the right way now. Still got space. I'm going to get my cartridge in. I'm hoping you guys are seeing this and I'm not blocking it with my big fat head. Okay, cartridge is in. What did I do with that little... There it is. Find the hole. It's kind of a good thing that I did find this little tool because this is the one you really don't want to over tighten. You really want to damage that heater cartridge. And that really is just light. Alright, so let's turn it back on. And see if we can get it to warm up. Alright. Temperatures going up. Now once it's warmed back up again, I'm just going to check and make sure that the nozzle is still tight. Because if you don't get your nozzle tight, or if you have noticed a buildup of plastic, right? A below that nut and above that aluminum block then your nozzle inside this thing your nozzle is not touching your throat and there's where you need to make sure that it's tight enough and then inside let's take a peek here real quick you notice the top of my throat as it focuses, top of my throat, this will be locked in, not touching anything. So that's kind of the way you want it. Make sure you lock this nut, because that'll keep it, you know, from spinning. Make sure you got three flats of a space. And as you see, my temperature's up. Everything's running. So, put this back in the tripod. I'm just going to give this thing a little bit of a test. Keep getting all my tools in the way. Hey, everything seems tight. Now, one thing I did forget to mention though, anytime you go messing with that, okay, now you got to get your nozzle set above that bed again. So, I'm going to have to go through the whole calibration. I'm going to make sure my, my X is even on both sides. And I'm going to check, make sure my nozzle is um, not too far past the bed because I know my bed is level so I'll be able to use that right there which is my Z stop which I moved from back there to out here I've shown it in a prior video you can go back and watch one of them but uh, I'll be able to just do some fine adjustments and get that nozzle just right and then we'll see about printing again so I guess we can watch uh, as I calibrate if you're debating which fan shroud to to uh, this is a copy of the original and it always pops off this one kind of locks right on in behind the fan and uh, I don't know, it just has always stayed on, period. So, it's one I kind of went back to after this one and that one. 
I actually made a video if you go up here and watch it. It's uh, I made three of these in one week, so but my print quality was a lot less than it was now, so. Get my old tablet out. Okay. Hard to see my camera. Obviously, you won't zoom in, so we can get a good shot of that. But needless to say. I think we're in good shape. I'm going to uh, go through my normal process here of leveling it and see what we get. A little fine tuning just by a turn of a screw. Load up some filament. Test her out, right? Yeah, yeah. Those guys, filament filter, filament and shooting. Let's uh, warm this puppy up. We'll start a print. Fresh squirt of hairspray. See how we know exactly where it's going, because we're going for a good one. All right. So when I started this video, I really didn't intend for it to go in the direction that I've had it go. But um, after I changed the nozzle, um, I started to print. Turned out my nozzle wasn't close enough. Um, it printed. It was sticking to the bed, but eventually it started to warp. Um, so I stopped that print. But I, in that print, there was still some inconsistencies. Let me see if I can get it out of the garbage. So this is the print that it warped. You can see that it's, it's really warped. But prior to that, so after that, yeah, prior to that, I had this. And the filament just, just jammed up. So, I figured it might have been the filament. It's a brand new roll of black PLA. You know, what I, the same brand that I've been using. So I threw in some brown. Okay, we got some brown up there. It might be hard to see. And I printed that out. And, I, and the filament was broke right off. Clean right there. So I don't know what happened. I wasn't home, so I couldn't see. So I recalibrated my bed and printed it out again last night before I went to bed. And this time we have success. So here's what I've done though. There's so many parameters that I changed. I'm not exactly sure where I went right or where I was wrong. So first thing I did is I took the temperature and I lowered it went back to 220 because I raised it up with the with the black thinking that it was under extruding or was not melting properly that wasn't the solution so then I releveled my bed re replaced the nozzle in the throat that still didn't help the only thing has been different is this fan I put that back on too so with all that being done this was the result so not exactly sure where I went right or where I went wrong but this came out absolutely perfect so that being said I'm gonna change the color and I'm gonna start another print there was one other thing that I did forget to mention that um, I imported 
the STL file into a different program and there was some repairs that need to be made um, and so there was a repair done to the STL file as well but I just finished that shoot for that video went to uh, swap out uh, my filament and in my bucket I happen to find this brand new box wait that's not it not even prepared for the video I'm so flabbergasted with my with my air but I just found this and it's black PLA this was my brand new box of PLA that I supposedly was printing off of and it turns out that the problems that I was having with this black PLA is because it's ABS so this long story short and the moral of this whole story is make sure you know what you're doing when you or what you're printing you know because like seriously this was a stupid mistake um but i learned something and i have a fresh nozzle on my printer so once again enjoy anywho this has been another video from inside the mind of matt don't forget to like subscribe share make a comment tell me what you'd like me to do have a great day.